I generally tend to give radium-223 at an earlier stage. I like to give it before chemotherapy. Uh, the logic being that the bone marrow is robust. Uh, I have not uh, deployed uh, uh, palliative radiotherapy to the bone marrow, which of course will destroy the bone marrow wherever it is given. So ultimately, if we give multiple courses of palliative radiotherapy, the patients will become long-term anemic. Uh, likewise, the chemotherapy option is nice to reserve uh, because many patients are quite frankly frightened of chemotherapy. Uh, I don't believe that's always warranted, uh, but nonetheless, there's the fear of chemotherapy. Um, and so it's a lot easier to tell a patient, well, we're going to start by giving you an immune treatment, in this case, uh, Cipulus LT, uh, and an IV uh, treatment with radium. And I usually sequence those very quickly together. I will, for example, begin them on the Cipulus LT. At the same time, I'll begin prepping them for radium. Cipulus LT only takes five weeks. So in this patient, I would probably do Cipulus LT and then uh, transition into radium. So uh, radium-223 uh, should be given for six doses. Uh, multiple studies have shown that less than six doses results in inferior outcomes. Uh, the study presented uh, by Dr. Sternberg last year at ASCO uh, looked at a three different ways to give radium. One was to give higher doses still in six cycles. Another was to give longer duration, up to 12. And neither of those alternatives showed a significant improvement in outcomes uh, with uh, radium-223. So the standard is still uh, radium-223 for six doses. Imaging in castrate-resistant prostate cancer is a inexact science. Bone scans are not particularly helpful. They may be. Uh, likewise, CT scans are not accurate because they cannot distinguish between active cancer and uh, inactive or dormant cancer because the bones look white. Uh, so you really can't use regular CT. You really can't use regular uh, technician scanning. There is a role for a regular PET scan. The F-18 PET scan can be very helpful, but they're not allowed by most insurance companies. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, the uh, Aximan scan, the flucyclovine or Aximan scan can be very helpful to distinguish which bone metastases are active and which are not. And likewise, the PSMA scan can be very definitive. Um, so for example, you may see a patient who has on his CAT scan multiple spots on the bone, and yet uh, when you do the PET scan with either Aximan or, uh, or uh, let's say uh, F18, uh, something like that, you may find that only one or two of the uh, bone lesions are active. The others either being inactive or uh, eradicated by the hormone therapy. So it's somewhat unique to see that not all bone metastases seen on CT scan are uh, active. 